Welcome back. So in this video, I want to talk about my philosophy of making a pen uh, and how to do both for comfort and for visual aesthetic. Um, you know, pens are great gifts to give, but first and foremost, you need to determine what's its function going to be. Form fits function. If you're dealing with a writing pen, you need to realize most people like a smooth pen all the way across, right? They, they, it's easier to grip. Just zoom in here on that so you can see what I mean. The are on here, it's easier to grip and it's comfortable to use. You can add some shape. Here's one that's a little flared out for exaggeration. You can see how it gets really fat here towards the tip which is where you normally hold a pen. And I can tell you, this isn't comfortable. This pen was meant to be decorative, so I, and, and, and as an example, so I made it a little exaggerated in terms of width here, so you get an idea. Um, uh, if I'm looking for something that was comfortable and a little bit flared out, you could see here on this pen, it's hard to tell, but there is a slight flare coming up here. Uh, which makes it nice and comfortable. It's not obtrusive, it's easy to grip. So be careful when you're using a pen, you're figuring out how you wanna do shapes and such. I've seen people do beads and coves and all sorts of fancy, fancy things, but then people can't use them, right? You gotta make sure if you want it to be used, make sure it's comfortable in your hand. So let's say now you've latched on to your physical design in terms of comfort. The next comes, well, what about grain? What about colors? Things like that. Depending on what type of material you use, there's different patterns gonna emerge when you make your pen. Um, a lot of the acrylics, such as this bluish blank here, blue and white, it's, it's a random pattern. So you end up something like I just showed you on that first pen, where it doesn't really matter what's the top, what's the bottom. Uh, it doesn't matter which way you're going for a seven millimeter. Let's get back, because I did this straight all the way across, so the function is writing. And since there's no patterns to align, it looks pleasing to the eye. In other cases, you may do a pen that has a particular grain or a color pattern, and you really want to match it so that it looks normal, right? It looks right. Uh, this is a great example. Let me zoom in more. This is a homemade where I just put together two types of wood together. It's hard, it's, let's see the other focus, if it's focus will kick in. But what we've got is a dark wood and a maple. So you sort of want the maple to align and you want the dark pat segments to align. So, you know, if, if they weren't aligned, it would just look really strange to the eye, right? It'd be very, you'd go, what's wrong with the pattern there? Another good example is these Spectraply blanks. Spectraply are dyed, it's a manufactured product. Uh, it's like a mini plywood where different layers are dyed different colors. You can see I have, it's orange and blue. And for the most part, the segments are lined up orange and blue, orange and blue, orange and blue, orange and blue. It looked really strange if we had something like this. Where things just don't line up at all. Your eye, the human nature, human eye likes patterns, we like symmetry. So you, you really gotta think of how you're doing these. Uh, so how do you keep track when you're creating a blank, uh, prepping for you to put on the, the lathe. What I do is, I, it's very simple. If I'm working on, I'll just take, as it, you know, as it comes off the bandsaw, I have my bottom piece and I have my top piece. And what I do is I just label A and B. And when I put them on the mandrel, A goes on first. Okay, so this one I still haven't done the prep work for the, 
yet for the cleaning out the glue and such. And then, you know, then B goes on. And I always, this is just my pattern, right? This is how I do it. A and B. And A is always, to me, the, uh, where, you know, the bottom, where the ink cartridge is going to be. Uh, it, it comes out. Or it could, you know, I'm very consistent that way. I don't know why, I just how I started doing things. It becomes even more important when you're dealing with pens where the tubes are of two different sizes. This is a navigator kit. It's one of my favorites. And the tubes are two different sizes. Uh, not just in width and diameters, but in length as well. So it's two different drill bits, two different size bushings. So it's very important to keep track of which piece is which piece. Uh, and you, again, there's no choice that this one's a, the shorter piece is a top and the longer piece is the uh, main pen mechanism that holds the ink cartridge and some other components in here, uh, the spring and such. So you got to really count those together um, when you're putting them, when you're figuring out how to align and where you're going to make your cuts. Um, when, when you put it on your mandrel, when it comes off the mandrel, how do you, you know, is this, uh, I may have had A and B on the mandrel, but be careful when you take it off the mandrel because did you turn it around? Is it in the right orientation? It's important because remember we talked about the patterns that emerge and we want to sort of keep those patterns together because the eye likes the patterns. So it's just keep that in mind when you're doing those. Um, short video, hopefully you liked it. This, just a little design aesthetic video and my next video, I will teach you how to do the navigator pen. The navigator